It's Adam here for PC Monitors and today I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the AOC AG241QX. The OSD has two methods of control. The first is pressable buttons on the underside of the bottom bezel and the second is this little remote controller which you connect uh, via mini USB to the monitor and you can place that pretty much anywhere on the desk unless you've got an absolutely massive desk because the uh, the cable is uh, pretty long. So I'm going to first take a look at this more conventional OSD um, control system. The first button there allows you to select the input source used by the monitor. The second button, the left arrow allows you to activate um, or deactivate the game mode, cycle through the game modes, which I'll come on to in a little bit. The right arrow allows you to adjust something called shadow control, and that's a bit like BenQ's black equaliser. So if you increase that, it basically brightens the image with the intention of um, making things more visible, particularly in dark areas. But this isn't uh, very selective, to be honest. It's um, You can probably quite clearly see the image become very bright and quite flooded and washed out as you increase that much above 50. And you can decrease that, which makes the image dimmer, uh, makes darker shades blend together. And, I mean, some people might like to decrease that slightly if they like a slightly more vibrant look. It uh, changes the gamma slightly as well. So that's a little control there, not necessary on this monitor in my opinion, but it's a nice little flexibility to have. Next there's the main menu. There's also a power button and a power LED. And the LED glows white when the monitor's on and amber when it's in standby. Now the, the OSD controller, the functions essentially mirror what's here. So if you press the, it's got the, sorry, it's got the left arrow and the right arrow menu, OK, a back button, and three numbers there, which correspond to various different gaming presets, which you can uh, customize, and I'll come on to that in a little bit. And if you press. menu to go into the main menu or press the menu button here to go into the main menu. You'll see that it's laid out in AOC's usual widescreen style, which hasn't changed since 2011, which is quite, um, uh, perhaps it's due a bit of an upgrade, but uh, I mean, it's, it does the trick anyway. It's got all the functions. First off, there's a luminance section and that allows you to change the brightness, the contrast of the screen. You can select an eco mode and that just adjusts the brightness and nothing else to various preset values. There are three gamma modes which are explored in the review. DCR, dynamic contrast ratio, which is also explored in the review. Dynamic contrast mode. Image setup, which is greyed out unless you're using an analog VGA connection because everything's automatically configured for digital connections anyway. Colour setup menu allows you to change to one of the preset colour temperature modes, the default being warm. There's also user, which allows you to manually configure the red, green and blue colour channels, as I've done. DCB, dynamic colour boost, which selectively oversaturates various colours, or oversaturates lots of different colours, in the case of full enhance. There's a um, picture boost next, which controls the bright frame function of the monitor. And this puts a little frame on the screen and allows you to adjust the um, digital brightness and the contrast levels independently of the rest of the screen. For example, if you wanted to highlight a certain section of the screen, like the map in a game or something like that, it's digital brightness control. It obviously, um, well, not obvious, but um, 
maybe to some people, but not to everyone. It's different to the regular backlight control or brightness control. It doesn't affect the backlight brightness. Um, that's all controlled as one unit, so you can't have one bit of the screen dimmer than the rest of the screen. But you can have the relative intensity of shades different. So, um, so the bright, uh, sorry, the whites don't have to be as bright, and the bright, the lighter colours aren't necessarily as bright if you lower that. There's OSD setup, and that has various options related to the OSD itself. You can change the language that it's displayed in, the timeout period in seconds before it will disappear after the last button press automatically. You can, of course, go back and uh, or, or use the back button on the controller to exit the OSD. You can set that between five seconds if you're uh, some sort of amazing, amazing OSD ninja or you can set that to as high as 120 seconds if like me you're trying to video all of this. You can change the DP capability, the display port capability of the monitor. You, you'd only want, really want to use 1.1 if you're using a an older graphics card or a system which doesn't support DP 1.2. The full capability of the monitor including AMD FreeSync does actually require you to be using 1.2 but that's there for compatibility purposes on older systems. You can change the horizontal and vertical position of the OSD on the screen. HDMI revision, so similar to the DP capability, you can, for compatibility reasons you could set that to 1.4 if you need to. There is the ability to change how transparent the OSD appears. There's a break reminder feature which will just put a, uh, a little message on the screen after an hour I believe it is to just remind you to take a break. You can change the volume of the integrated speakers or anything connected to the 3.5mm jack. Next there's a um, new menu, or a menu I haven't seen on AOC monitors before anyway, called Game Setting. And this allows you to adjust various things that will be rele uh, relevant to gamers in particular. So you can activate the game modes, as I mentioned before. Um, you could cycle through them quickly with the OSD as well. Um, and there are three custom settings which you can activate with the 1, 2 and 3 on the keypad. There's um, there's FPS. I'm just going to mention these briefly. I don't really like any of these game modes in particular because um, they don't give a nice natural image. But there's FPS and that gives you a very bright image, overly sharp. Um, some obvious oversaturation as well. RTS, which is quite similar but even brighter, um, a little bit more washed out. Racing, which just changes the image in other ways. Um, again, it doesn't look natural, it doesn't look accurate, but uh, you know, I know some people like to fiddle with these settings. I don't really see how this is good for a racing mode, this is good for RTS, this is good for FPS, but you know, AOC aren't alone and having these little kind of gimmicky, in my opinion, game modes. Then there's Gamer 1, Gamer 2 and Gamer 3 and you can customise each of these. Um, unlike the presets like the FPS and the RTS mode, you can actually adjust the luminance um, and the gamma setting when you've got the Gamer 1, Gamer 2 or Gamer 3 active as well. And it, uh, I mean, it does seem to apply excessive sharpness, which you don't have any control over, as well. And it does affect the colours, makes them quite oversaturated, which again you can't actually adjust because um, the you see the colour setup menu, which you would, might want to access, is actually greyed out if you're using any of these gamer modes. So there are some, whether you've got the game mode active or not, there are some other settings on the game setting menu. Shadow control, which I've talked about before. Low input lag. Um, this doesn't have any negative effects if you have this on. You can have this either on or off. As I mentioned in the review, it does slightly decrease the input lag that I measured anyway. 
and with if you're using AMD FreeSync or you've got it connected to an AMD FreeSync compatible GPU this will actually be greyed out but my testing suggests that it's effectively on anyway if you're using FreeSync or you've got it connected to a FreeSync GPU so don't really worry about that but if you do see that this is not greyed out because you're not using FreeSync or whatever just leave it on because it doesn't seem to have any negative effects um, there's game colour and that's basically a saturation enhancement function NVIDIA's digital vibrance control so if you increase this the saturation levels increase so shades are pulled closer to the edge of the colour gamut but the colour gamut itself is not extended you therefore lose variety of shades things do not look natural you um, um, but I know some users do like to have a more saturated look, even at the expense of accuracy or shade variety, so you can do that. If you decrease it, um, as you'd expect, it decreases the saturation levels. If you decrease it enough, it actually goes completely monochrome, which is uh, quite cool, but uh, it's not really particularly useful for most gamers. So the default is 10 there. There's a low blue light filter, which is also explored in the review. You can set that to off, weak, medium or strong. Overdrive feature, explored in the review. So there's off, weak, medium or strong for that as well. And I would recommend medium as per the review. There is an extra settings, so some more settings there. Um, it's actually the final section of the OSD. Input select, you can have it automatically selected for you or you can manually select one of the inputs. So there's D sub uh, DVI, HDMI, two HDMI ports in fact, and display port. Auto config, that's just a um, related to the analog connection, it's not required for digital connections. And there's an off timer feature which you can set to a time in hours after which the screen will go on to standby unless you press one of the buttons when prompted and you can set that between 1 and 24 hours or 0 which is disabled. There's an image ratio feature and to access that you need to be running at a non-native resolution so I'm just gonna switch this over to full HD and before I do that I'm just gonna show you um, you probably noticed or hopefully noticed when I was going through this system it's um, it's, it's fairly snappy in terms of navigating through the menu system. Everything appears quite quickly as you change uh, as you change between the different parts of the menu. Now, an interesting thing I've observed, uh, because when I set it to full HD, it's going to, in fact, I'm going to set it to full HD and 60 hertz just to show you something. Now this isn't related to the fact that I'm actually running at a lower resolution now. It's simply when you reduce the refresh rate of the monitor, the menu system also seems to reduce in its uh, responsiveness, which is quite strange. It now seems very sluggish and it takes a while to navigate through the system, which is very odd. So this would happen if you're running at the native 2560 by 1440 as well and you reduce the refresh rate. Anyway, the purpose of doing this really was to show you the image ratio feature, which is set to wide by default. So I'm running full HD, it uses an interpolation process to stretch everything across the whole screen to use all of the pixels. There's a moderate degree of softening as I explore in the review. You can set that to one to one and that doesn't give you any softening at all or, or distortion or anything like that. Everything is purely 1920 by 1080 pixels, but there's also a black border for the unused pixels around the image. And there are various other settings which will be useful if you're actually using a, a resolution and aspect ratio that matches that, so you can have it look like a 17 inch 4 by 3 screen. And I know some people like to use this if they're really used to a certain uh, resolution or size of screen and they want to simulate that so there's um sorry I'll, 
go back 19 inch 4 by 3 as well 19 inch 5 by 4 19 inch 16 by 10 21 and a half inch 16 by 9 22 inch 16 by 10 as you can see there's just some black borders at the end there it's perhaps not the best background to be using for two reasons I know some people don't like snakes and also because you can't see the black borders now you can 23 inch 16 by 9 so there's some uh, 23 inches slightly smaller than this so there's just a little black border at the side there and wide so we're back to the beginning again there's DDC slash CI which is the plug and play functionality some of the plug and play functionality of the monitor it's a channel used to allow software to communicate with the monitor for example if you want to use AOC's software to adjust the AOC's uh, sorry the OSD settings then you can do that there's an option to reset everything to the factory defaults and there's also something which will show you the current resolution horizontal frequency and vertical frequency so I'm just gonna change it back to the native resolution. You'll notice that I'm actually using an NVIDIA graphics card at the moment. Uh, I've, I've been using an AMD card for pretty much all of the review. I've just swapped it back to my NVIDIA card because I'm about to move on to a different monitor. And uh, Obviously I can't use AMD FreeSync on an NVIDIA card but I can of course use 144Hz refresh rate at the native resolution. And now if I go back to the extra settings, you can see that it says 2560 by 1440 and the vertical frequency, which is the important one, just ignore horizontal frequency, 144 Hz. And if you, if you are running FreeSync, which I can't do as I'm having an NVIDIA graphics card in my system at the moment, that would actually just say FreeSync. It isn't like some monitors where it'll tell you the refresh rate, the variable refresh rate that's currently being used which would match the frame rate, it just says FreeSync. Um, and it says that whether FreeSync is being actively used or whether it is just in normal static refresh rate mode. So you can't use that as an indication that a particular game is actually using FreeSync, but you should hopefully be able to tell from the experience. And again, um, the, the, the FreeSync experience is explored in quite some detail in the written review of the monitor. So there you have it. That was the OSD on-screen display menu system of the AOC AG241QX. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info.